Diefenbachia, also known as the dumb cane plant, is one of the top 10 most popular indoor plants out there. It's easy to care for and has beautiful variegated green and white foliage. Part of what makes it so easy for most people is it doesn't need direct sunlight. The dark green leaves of this tropical plant thrive in the conditions that exist in most homes. There are so many different Diefenbachia species, you'll find something that fits your home's aesthetic easily. In this video, we'll cover the Diefenbachia plant from A to Z, its care, propagation, pests, diseases, and common problems. Let's get started! Diefenbachia plants are also known as dumb cane or leopard lily plants. They are all members of the Araceae family, or the family that includes peace lilies. These flowering perennials come from the West Indies, Mexico, and Argentina. If left unpruned, the plant will resemble a palm tree. This is what Diefenbachia looks like in the wild. It's here they grow on forest floors under the shade of canopy trees. Most cultivars have white speckles on the leaves, though not all cultivars have this feature. All species grow a characteristic spadex flower and these tend to bloom in the wild. They may bloom in domestic environments, but it's not as common. The flowers are white, with a spiked inflorescence. In the wild, these are pollinated by beetles. The name dumb cane comes from the fact that the plant's leaves contain raffides, which can poison you and leave you unable to speak for a period of time. Dumb cane is poisonous to humans. Ingestion can cause the mouth and throat to burn and swell. In severe cases, the swelling can block airways resulting in suffocation. According to the ASPCA, Diefenbachia is toxic to both cats and dogs. The leaves contain calcium oxalate crystals that will irritate their mouths and prevent them from performing many normal functions like swallowing. Because the home basically mimics the natural habitat of Diefenbachia SPP, they are not hard to care for. Here are the basic needs of this lovely tropical and most commonly indoor plant. 1. Light and temperature. Most dumb cane plants prefer a medium to bright light source. This means they shouldn't be exposed to direct light, but will thrive away from a windowsill. Some cultivars prefer even less light, like Camille. You can get away with placing Diefenbachia in pretty low-light situations. Dumb canes thrive in temperatures between 16 degrees to 27 degrees Celsius. Any dipping below temperatures of 10 degrees Celsius and your plant will suffer cold damage. Heat above 32 degrees Celsius can cause singed leaves. 2. Water and humidity. The best way to water your dumb cane is to let it get moderately dry and then completely drench the soil. Keep in mind you can only use this method if you have a drainage hole in your pot. Without one you risk causing root rot and killing your plant. Let the soil dry to one inch before you repeat the process and never let the soil get bone dry. In their native habitat, these plants tend to have consistently moist soil. 3. Soil. Like many houseplants, Diefenbachia plants need a soil that retains some water but also one that drains well. If you get a standard potting soil it may pack too tightly and drown out the roots, so mix in perlite or coarse sand to add aeration. If you want to make your own soil mix from scratch, here's a good recipe. 1 part peat moss or humus. 1 part garden soil. 1 part perlite or coarse sand. 1 pinch of lime. 4. Fertilizer. Dumb cane loves being fed at least twice a month. Use a high-quality houseplant fertilizer diluted to half strength, but make sure it doesn't have lime. Only fertilize during the growing season, you don't need to feed it as often or at all during the winter months. 5. Repotting Diefenbachia. Depending on the size of your Diefenbachia, it may need to be repotted as it grows. If you decide to repot, do it right as winter ends and the growing season is about to start. Pick a pot that is slightly bigger than the existing pot, do not overpot it. Remove the plant from its original pot and lightly dust the dirt off its roots. Pull them apart gently and place them in the new pot, adding soil to pack it in. Water sparsely after repotting and continue your regular care regimen. 6. Pruning Diefenbachia. Although it's not necessary to prune your dumb cane, you may want to trim it a bit to keep it under control. Wear a good pair of gardening gloves when you prune this plant. 
The sap contains oxalate crystals that can irritate the skin if you have any open cuts. To prune, cut through the stems at a 45 degrees angle with a sterilized pair of scissors or knife. Then water your plant after pruning. 7. Diefenbachia Growing Problems Overall, the Diefenbachia plant is a hardy houseplant that's easy to grow. There are a few types of bacteria that can attack the plant and decimate it, so be on the watch for these. It's also garnered controversy due to its toxicity for humans and pets alike, but as long as you're careful you shouldn't have any problems having it in your home. There are a number of improper growing conditions that cause Diefenbachia yellow leaves. Moisture stress, improper lighting, and improper temperatures all are to blame. Remember to keep your plant in temperatures between 16 degrees to 27 degrees Celsius in indirect, but bright light. Water via soaking when the top inch of soil is dry. 8. Pests The classic pests that affect most houseplants can also affect your Diefenbachia, mealybugs, spider mites, and aphids. For all of these bugs, you can try to wipe them off with a cotton swab doused in rubbing alcohol. That's an effective tactic if you catch the infestation early. You can also try washing your plant's leaves off in water, knocking them all off. You may need to do this three to four times to be sure you got everything. For more serious infestations, your best option is to go with a systemic insecticide that gets into your dumb cane plant and kills any bug that feasts on the leaves. 9. Diseases Most of the diseases that affect dumb cane will cause rot of some kind. While each of these diseases has their own presentation, symptoms, and prevention, there are some general rules that will prevent you from ever dealing with any of them. Do not overwater your plant, overwatering is the cause of many types of disease due to standing water and the rotting effect it has. Always use sterilized equipment, when making cuttings, transplanting, and repotting, sterilize all of the gardening gear you use to avoid transferring disease. Frequently Asked Questions my dumb cane plant was doing fine, but now the leaves are yellowing and there are dry spots on the leaves. Over time, soil breaks down and there is laceration for the roots. If you've had your Diefenbachia for a while, you may want to repot with fresh soil and check the roots for signs of damage. How do I revive the Diefenbachia plant that I got as a gift? It's not looking too good. Go back to the basics, give it bright indirect light, keep the soil dry, increase humidity with misting, and keep away from hot spots. Can I root cuttings of my Diefenbachia in water? For the most part, dumb cane plants don't root well in water. They do much better with air layering or by putting cuttings in a potting soil with a lot of peat moss. Where should I put Diefenbachia in my house? Place it in an area offset from a direct light source and away from drying AC vents. How much sunlight does a Diefenbachia need? Anywhere from bright, indirect light to full shade works. Is Diefenbachia an air purifier? Yes. Its dark green leaves will filter xylene out of the air surrounding it. Are Diefenbachia hard to care for? Definitely not. If you can remember to water and up pot these popular indoor plants, you're doing better than most. How many times a week should I water my Diefenbachia? Water when the top inch of soil is dry, which generally occurs every one to two weeks, depending on the season. If you've watched it so far, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.